came to me for help for the marriage. And then when I listened to both of them, it's like this, that the wife went away to her home, her own home, her parents' home, for a period of time, for I don't know how long, one or two weeks. And then while she was away, the husband's ex-wife came because the ex-wife has good relationship with his parents. And the husband wanted to make it easy for the, for the ex-wife, he let her stay in the home. But he did not let the, his wife know. So the ex-wife stayed in the home mainly to re relate to the parents because she has a good relationship with them. She wanted to spend some time with her parents. And then when the wife knew about it, she was very happy unhappy and she ran away and she took the train and she cried all the way and every time when she went on that train track again that that uh, this uh, that way again every time she remembered coming on this way she cried every time when she went on the train and from then on her relationship with the husband was forever terrible when I heard this, this is very serious. It sounds like very serious. And then she said, the husband, every time she, he said, there's nothing, nothing, nothing. It's nothing happened, nothing happened. He just, she just came to see my parents. You know, nothing happened. Now, it sounds like impossible. But what I did, I listened, okay? So I listened to the husband and said, what happened? Okay, he said, well, the, the wife just, came by, I want to see your parents, and then, so I say, it's easy for, for her, so I just let her stay in the home, and then so she can spend some time with the, with the, uh, with the uh, parents. And, um, and then, he didn't want to tell the wife, because he wants to make things simple, <laughs> so he didn't tell the wife, but that makes the wife very angry, okay? And then he said, there's really nothing. I did not do anything wrong. So I agree with him. There is nothing. But according to your wife, there is something. Because she didn't know about it. Can you understand that your wife is really unhappy when she said that every time when she went on that train trip again, the same, you know, the same trip. Every time she go on that distance, she would cry. Can you understand that? I asked her, him. Because every time she, he said, he just said, he didn't listen to her. Every time he just say nothing, nothing, nothing. And then every time when he's, he said nothing, the wife is angry. So I asked him, can you understand that it is not nothing for your wife? It's a very big serious thing because she thinks that you're cheating her. You, don't, you didn't let her know and then you think it's nothing and then every time you say it's nothing. Can you understand that it really affects your wife? And then. And then he said, yes, I can understand that it really affects my wife. First time. In the first time, he admits that. Because he did not admit that. It's a serious thing. Now, it's not serious in the sense that he had any relationship with the ex-wife. It's not that. It's serious because he didn't realize the feeling of the wife. He didn't realize that hurts his wife. He didn't realize that that is the problem. Because he always put attention on, I did not have any sexual relationship with my ex-wife. There is no emotional relationship. He just thought the problem is that. But he didn't realize that it's making, hurting his wife. So I asked him, do you realize that it hurts, it hurts your wife? When she realized that you did not tell her, you kept it a secret, and second, you let her stay in the home, and every time you say nothing, so three things. You didn't tell her, and then you uh, let her stay, the ex-wife stay there, and also you think it's a small thing. So can you admit to her and say, yes, it affects you, it's something serious. And I'm sorry I did this to you, and I realize now it really hurts you. And, and the man was willing to do it, and he hold on to her hand, because she, he wanted to restore the relationship. He did not know how to restore. <laughs> he thought, I've done my best. It's nothing, nothing, nothing. He didn't realize he has to respond to the feelings. Yeah. So he responded to her feelings and said, I'm sorry, I make you feel unhappy. That, you know, that it makes you feel cheated. Uh, and, uh, 
and then I thought it's nothing, but it really hurts you. So he apologized. And the wife said, okay, now I can forgive you. Because you admit there is something. Not in a sense you have done something with the ex-wife, but in a sense that what you did hurt me. He, he was not willing to admit that it hurt her. Now he admitted, I hurt you. I'm sorry I hurt you. I did not want to hurt you. I didn't realize I hurt you. Please forgive me. I'm, I'm willing to be very careful about this thing, about my ex-wife. I'm very careful. I'll tell you everything. He was willing to do that. And then he said that to the wife. And the wife forgave her. And then that, that afternoon when I saw them, and the wife said, Oh, now we are like a, we were in the beginning stage, very happy now. <laughs> because it was just because he did not respond to the feelings. <laughs> and responded to the feeling, resolved the whole thing. For the few years, they were in pain. And suddenly it was resolved. And another, another wife. I only saw the wife this time. It's because it's a worker. I went to a training for ministers. And it's a woman minister. And she said, she told me, uh, my husband want me to have more children. And I don't want him to have more children. I already have a I have three daughters, but my husband want a son and want me to give more birth to more, more children. And I don't like that. And, and now I stay, I go to ministry, I do, every day I go home at about 10 or 11 p.m. And when I go home, I sleep with my daughters. I don't sleep with him. And I feel very unhappy because my husband gave me pressure. So I listened to that and I said, I'm sorry that happens to you that makes you feel very unhappy. Your pressure from your husband is very hard for you. It's not easy for you to face that and makes you feel I have my family, my, my husband and my ministry is all difficult on you and it will add pressure to you. Do you feel pressure? She just feel pressure. Very, very difficult. And then I asked her, now what, how you handle it? Do you think it will affect your husband? She said, yes. He's unhappy because I'm with my daughters. So, do you want this to continue? Okay, do you want this to continue? What can you do? And finally we came up with a solution. That you cannot sleep with the daughters. You have to sleep with your husband. Now, he feels that I don't have a wife anymore. And about the issue of giving birth to a son, that's something you can talk about. But first, the relationship. Are you willing to sleep with your husband? Are you willing to say good things to your husband? If you don't have your good relationship, your, your ministry will crumble. Do you want your ministry to crumble? Your family will crumble, your marriage, your ministry will crumble. Do you want to work on it? And she said, yes. I want to build up the relationship. Not because of my husband insisting on having a son, that is an issue, but I don't want to make it a bigger issue and then be against my husband. And on that day, he sent, she sent a message to her husband and said, I love you. I, I want to have a good relationship. And then the husband responded, I love you too. I want to build up the relationship too. And then the next time I saw her, she said, now we are like lovers. So it has happened when one issue can hold back a whole marriage and that issue might not be a very big issue but people didn't realize what they were doing they thought what they were doing is right because they thought they were handling right but they didn't realize that the emotions are holding back the whole marriage but when they find the key not having giving birth to the son doesn't mean you don't sleep with your husband that's two different things so how can you find a solution so when it does resolve and then the relationship uh, and then they know how you know they they work building on keep work building on the relationship the relationship can be restored so very often marriage are held back by some issues unresolved issues we have to find out the problem where it is and listen to both sides and don't accuse any side it's very important when we do counseling don't accuse any one side listen to both sides and then and then uh, respond to both persons' feelings. Many husbands said to me, I'm so happy you counsel us because you are the first person to listen to me and support me. Because they, 
and the wife always feels supported. But the husband, many husbands feel, people will tell them, you did, you're not a good husband, you don't listen to your wife, you don't do well. And they always feel no one listen to them. But I listen to the wife and I understand the feelings and the needs and the hurt feeling. And I listen to the husband and I understand, I understand both sides. So they feel, both of them feel good when I listen to them. And I don't accuse any one of them. I just find, try to find a solution to the marriage. Now all these skills need more practice. If I come next time, I want to have longer period to do training. It's not just two hours. <laughs> you need to be two days, three days training, a longer training. Because it, even two or three days is not sufficient, but it just helps you to get into it. Thank you.